Live, I have with me Tonya Williams and Sherrod Lightborn. I know everyone knows Sherrod, I am sure. He is the man behind my branding images in the yellow coat, everyone. Yes, so feel free to follow his page and check out his work. And this hey, is Billy. beautiful. Hi, Billy. Hi, everyone. His beautiful fiance, Tonya. Now, I know that we have a lot of questions tonight. We are going to be talking about relationships. And we're going to be talking about the process of relationships. So we're going to get into all the Tonya and Gerard nitty gritty. Not too much, but we're just going to hear their views as a couple from the dating process, being able to balance love, work, and parenting. And still, you know, it's just balance. Let's, because I, I know last time I had my husband on the session, we talked about balance and, you know, sometimes people like the cell phone, work never ends, but we're going to get into all of that. And so I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold you up any longer. If you have questions, I'm going to be reading from here so that they can answer the questions. Okay. So Sherrod and Tonya, welcome to Faith Talk. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So listen, tell, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and the relationship from the beginning you don't have to go step by step by step but we want to start off from the beginning go what <laughs> she's a daughter she she's anyway because questions you like are going to go? be coming in Would so like uh man. okay well this is my version because you know that everybody there's always a verses. twisted version yes um Tanya saw a picture on Facebook, right? I was, I was right back when the balcony was hot. Remember the balcony? The was balcony, hot? yes. And um, Tanya saw a picture with me standing with two of my guy friends. We were on the, we were just chilling, and she saw the picture and she, she said that she, in her mind, she's like, oh, this, this is the guy that takes the pictures. Oh. Oh, he looks so different when he's not working. <laughs> oh my God, let me hit him up, right? Right. <laughs> oh, Tanya, this is good. <laughs> so, this is good. <laughs> Good. So she good. was, she, she, you know, she saw, you know, I, I don't know. Anyway, she had hit me up um, to do photos for her daughter, right? And um, who was turning one at the time, and so it just happenstance through, I guess through just you know the universe is weird how it makes things happen. Yeah. Her, one of her closest friends hit her up and said, "Hey, do you like this guy's work? I want to hire him to do my wedding." <laughs> And it was me, and she, she was like, yes, yes. She was really pushing, right? Pushing, because right. I think she wanted to see me. Like, of course, right? I know, I know. So, um, <laughs> so I ended up shooting her friend's wedding, and Tony was there, and I noticed her like immediately. You know, she was Why in this me? tight dress, and yeah. you know, oh, hip God. showing. Send the hearts, he's talking, send the hearts, he's talking. <laughs> so there's a friend who said, this is the unrated <laughs> version. Freddie says, is this the unrated version? Yeah, We're talking, we got, we let's go. Kids, kids yeah. are All right. so we have to keep it clean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, like I, I noticed her like immediately and she, we didn't really talk because she, um, you know, it was a wedding and I was focused on doing my job. Right. And so, you know, just like at the end of the wedding reception, she like, hey, she like tapped me. Right? Just okay. Like, hey, we have to, we have to do my pictures. <laughs> right? No, y'all woman, y'all slick. Hey. Y'all slick. So she, you know, she like. Women, I need y'all to talk for us. He's saying we're slick. Women, let's go. <laughs> she, she like a little nut. She was like, hey, don't forget me. So, you know, I was like, all right, cool, whatever. So right. we met, and I ended up uh, photographing her and Layla. And um, from then, we just we started to talk more and more over the phone. And um, he used to talk then. We ended yeah. off really well, and, you know, we, 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 we focused more on our friendship first. Like, we, right. we just talked a lot, we talked every day, every night, uh, until um, we just decided to date. And then, <laughs> so, dating just happened? No. Matt no, so we became friends. Right, that's what I'm saying. And then you said you, you, you decided to date. So right. I just so went it right into... It wasn't, it wasn't uh, automatically just my boyfriend. Right. We were, we were friends. Uh-huh. Um, and then... For about dated. how long do you think A couple were months. A couple months. A couple months. A couple yeah. months. We would hang out casually right. among other friends. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, we, we, we decided to go out on a date and... Um, we went on a few dates, but very casual, nothing heavy, yeah, just no keeping it simple. And then one day she's like, maybe we should make this official. Wow. Right? wow. So I don't recall. I, she, her version is complete. Her version is I was running behind her. Because that's, he was. That's not the true story, Kiki. Okay, listen, we got to hear the whole truth. You know, fake talk, my viewers love transparency. They want to know the whole truth and nothing but the truth. 
So, you know, just so that they can understand, you know. Oh, God. We got people here. Let me just read some comments really quickly. Um, we have Miss Triple M. She says, plenty popcorn here. Freddie says, Tanya going to blush her cheeks off. Juju locks. Jewel is saying, I'm just snacking. And she got all the popcorn. Cody, Cody, Cody needs to go. Bella said, Cody, she too. Cody needs to go nurse her head. And Cody, all up in our grips. Cody is actually here live. Cody needs to go as well. Cody needs to go. Oh, my God. But, I want to I wanna get back into it. So, Sherrod, talk to me. Um, when you met Tonya, you know, you became friends. How was it when you found out? Because a lot of people, you know, men, you know, I'm single. I don't have any children. And you found out when you know that she had a daughter. Was that anything for you or that was just... Um, it was interesting because I... We got to hear you. Why don't you ask he Tonya said, the questions? Because she clearly... Listen, I just, I'm just interjecting. He said he would never date a woman with a child. Of course, oh, I found that it out. Talk to Keith. Okay. Talk to Keith. Okay. Talk to Keith. And, and the viewers. And the viewers. And the viewers. Said, All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Sherrod said that he would never date a woman he with a child. He didn't say that to me, though. Okay. You heard this. No, no. I found that out after. After. Years after. But I want to hear you. Me? Yes. Yeah. Me? When you found out. When you, you Obviously, you knew she had a child. How was that for you being a single man coming in with a woman and a child? Man, it was it was really different for me. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know um, if I could handle it, you right. know, because you so I was so used to just being in a relationship where the focus is me and you, not me, you, and you too, right? It was it, I've always been in a relationship where. And I, I, a lot of my guy friends have been in relationships like that where, right. they, where the woman has a child and I always, I would always hear the back and forth and the stories and the experience and I, and I always thought I could never do that. Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, just, it was, it was something that was put in my, or she was put in my life to help me change my view on things like that. Right. And I think it's a case by case situation because not every woman with a child is necessarily made for a single man because he might not understand all of the attention that's not put into him because there's a, a young a, a kid involved. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it took a lot of it took a lot of adjusting. It took a lot of getting used to, um, and it was I think it was supposed to change me uh, because, like I said, my mind was set. I was like, no, I can't do it. No one with no time. I was like, uh, uh, not me. Not and me. why did you why did you think you said why did you think you you had that feeling? Because uh, I. Everybody's selfish, right? I, 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 I always told myself, you know, if I date a woman, I want her to be into me. I don't want her to, the focus to be on somebody else. And mind you, Kiki, the first few years of our relationship was very hard because Tanya would always, she'd go to work, then she'd have to go home and take care of. Layla was very young, right? So she was still like nursing her to sleep, yes. and she was, she was, you know, she was a, a young, she was a baby, mm -hmm. and you know, so it was like we can't talk because I have to put Layla to sleep or. Tanya would fall asleep and say, I'm going to call you back, fall asleep, and I'll never call you back. back. And that, that, oh, would, that would piss me off. And right. I, there are many times where I was just like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I know what I bring to the table. I need a woman who's going to focus on me. Not, attention. Not like, you know, mm -hmm. but then mm -hmm. over time, I grew to really love Layla. And yes. I had to understand this, this is just as much a part of Tanya as it is, as she is a part of the relationship that exactly. I want to be in with her. And so, exactly. uh, I, I had to adjust, and I and I adjusted because I wanted to, not because I felt like I had to. If mm -hmm. that makes sense, it does. Um, so once I made that adjustment, I said, you know, let's let's go from there. Wow. Freddie says we say a lot of nevers until the right moment arrives. Good point, Freddie. Good point. Um, tell her I trying to get tell her Jane Baptiste says is a real woman. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. Talk to me. This is a really, really good question. Exes. Exes. People of the past. You know, a lot of times you get into relationships and you're, like, you're concerned about who you've been with, who you dated, and then you bring in baggage from past relationships. Hurt, brokenness. You bring it into the relationships. Did you all find each other at a time when you were fresh out of a relationship or both of you were just single people at the time? I think mean, we were single. We were single because Layla was one. I mean, that's a, that's a good, I mean, that's a, this is it can go here or there because mine and I, Tanya is still attached to a man because Layla has a father, right? right? Me, I had no attachments. I had no, I have no kids of, of my own, right. single, like single, like a doorknob, but 
you know, she's still kind of attached to this man that she has to interact with because he's the child's father. How did you feel about that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I hated it. I hated it. Like, I, you know, you have to, again, because it's, a, it's such a new experience, mm -hmm. uh, now you, not only do you have to get used to a woman whose attention is not fully going to be on you, you have to get used to a woman whose attention is not fully on you, whose attention has to go to her father. Mm -hmm. Her responsibilities now, not, yes. like, not because they still, like, talk or have feelings, but, you know, that question is always there. Mm -hmm. Will she go back to him because they have a child, like, they have a child together. There's always, there's always going to be that connection that's never going to change. Right. How do you impact a woman in a way where she doesn't care about another man who has a, who she has a child with? Like they, yeah. When you when you come in from where I was coming from, it's like I, I what you. in the world did I get? I feel you. It's a setup. I feel, it's a setup. <laughs> I feel you because here you are. You are a single man with nothing. I mean, yeah. no attachments to anybody, and yeah. here it you is. Walk you walk into something, here is a kid. This was already an ex for me, and then I have to deal with the baby daddy. And this is another thing. Or not, but just well, like oh, yeah. are present. Right, 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 because they will be involved. So, Tanya, you're a bit quiet, and I, and I really want to hear from you. I'm quiet because I was... No, that's fine. We're having a dialogue, and, she I, and is, I... She get a cheese talker, so just talk. Freddie said, we as niggas, baby daddy responds. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep up because I don't want the comments to leave me behind and we, we miss people out. So if you have questions, please send them in so that I, I can answer, um, ask the questions to Sherrod and Tonya. So Tonya, tell me, Sherrod, what is one of the things that Sherrod being a photographer, a bachelor, what is one of the things in the relationship when, you, when it first started off, say dating, that was... Something that you said, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I, I cannot do this anymore. You know, I, I cannot deal with this guy anymore. What were some of the traits or what were some of the things that he did that may have caused you to bail out? Hmm. It's a good question. Listen. You ever, never thought about it? These people, these single bachelors, are very selfish. He's uh, just generally, and I mean, Probably through no fault of his own. And I right. think if you're single and you're, uh, you know, recently back from college, you've mm -hmm. been, you live by yourself, no parents involved, you are, like he said, he was thinking, okay, I'm going to find a girlfriend and the girlfriend is going to be mine. She's going to be focused on me. We're going to do everything together. There's not going to be any interruption. We can do whatever we have to do together. It's us. Right. Right. And it was not us. It was me, and this is my bundle, my Georgie bundle, and so either you want to be a part of that or not. Uh, um, I always say with parenting, it's you either do it or die trying. So your tolerance level for, um, your tolerance level for nonsense, mm -hmm. and I call it nonsense, we could use another word, but your tolerance level for nonsense is, is almost non-existent. So if someone asks, like, okay, I know you have a, ch I know you. I have questions. <laughs> I know you have a child. I know. Um, I empathize with that. I, I like his, him or her, or whatever the case is. Um, but I want some time. Like it's already pressure for the woman to balance. It's already pressure for her to be a parent. It's already pressure for all these things that are happening. You're still trying to be a woman. You're still trying to find time for yourself. Like all these things mm -hmm. and then your partner says yeah but hey hey hi i'm over here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no no we have no we have to work along with this and you will find that your partner once you work along with her or him mm -hmm. whatever the case is you'll find that they're more inclined to spend time with you make it work okay this is the babysitter we're gonna go out for the night like that sort of thing i i just from for me i can't i can't I don't deal well with selfish people because parents just off the top, forget being a woman, parents just off the top, right. they give, this they give themselves, this there's, there's no, no in between mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're responsible for a whole human being. Exactly. Like how do you, you, you have to. Mm -hmm. So when you get resistance from another person saying, I want to go out, I want to do that, blah, blah, blah. I, have to, I want to talk to you, you fell asleep, I want to talk. You know how much work this is? Checkpoint. 
Right. Let's push a pin right there. And it's not even, it's not even, oh, I'm mad because his response is that. It's, you know what? I'm going to stick a pin right here and I'm going to deal with this and I'll get back to you. And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But your first priority is this. I mean, unless it's marriage. But I found that my first priority was this. And right. so it's like, yeah, I love you, but guess what? <clears throat> we can have to, I can have to leave. Right? We'll have to because, catch up. Because, yeah, mm -hmm. we can, we can, on the flip side, we can catch up. Wow. You know what I mean? So you just, and, and, and what you don't want mm -hmm. or what most parents don't want, single parents don't want, is their partner to put them in a position where they have to choose. Because if you push me so against true. the wall, so I can, I, you know what I can choose. So and true. it won't be you. So true. You know what Very I mean? So, so it's important not to be put in that position. Mm -hmm. um, it's important for, and I think, I don't know if it's a culture thing, but you feel if you push me, you know, if you push me against the wall, like I can, you know, I'm going to automatically choose. No, I'm going to choose your child. child. Yeah. Not, so let's not do that. Let's talk about it. Let's say, okay, you know what? I feel a little neglected because whatever the case is, and let's work on it versus I can get mad. So that his selfishness, work. Shira, how to treat yeah. that selfishness. Yeah. And I mean, we all do as humans. I right. don't want to say it's just him. Fine. We all do as humans because there could be times when I, I'm like, when I have the free time. I'm sure and, there are times that right. you wanted to ride like, attention. I wanted, and, and he was a, his, his baby was his work. work. Exactly. So it's like, no, 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 I have to shoot. You didn't have that me though. Mm. Yeah, the, the tables are turned mm. I got some so, questions for y'all. So, yeah. Sherrod, what do you love about Tanya the most? Is question. that from Cody? Let's go to the next question. Okay. <laughs> no! A question from, we'll come back to that. I'm going to ask it anyway. A question from Freddie says, question for us, Sherrod. Are you at the point yet where Lay's father no longer even matters? Like, she's yours now. <laughs> oh, man. Ms. Triple M says, good question. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, I don't, re I don't think about it so much. Like, I respect the relationship she has with her father, and then I respect... Um, respect the fact that that's his title, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, Leila and I have grown to grown and built equally an amazing relationship. Beautiful. And so now it's not so much, you know, Tanya would vent and complain that he wasn't doing X, Y, Z, and and I would just get so tired of hearing about it to the point where I'm like, stop talking about this dude to me. I don't care. I don't want to hear about this dude. Um, and so as we grew, and as my relationship with Layla grew, like our relationship is like, we have this thing, right? And she, that's, it's our thing. So that's our relationship and nobody else has that except me and her. And even Tonya sometimes gets <laughs> angry because <laughs> the, the thing is Layla, is right, Layla. Layla, no, but not just the attention, but the thing, the relationship that I have with, with Layla mm -hmm. is completely different from the relationship she has with her own mother. Mm. Um, and I think that's the beauty of, the family because she's not biologically mine but our relationship is strong enough for me to think of her as mine wow and so i tell um you know i tell tanya and i tell other people like she's she's my daughter like i don't i don't think about the old step you know the title of stepdad stepdaughter like we have our relationship and we focus on that and we we build on that uh every day which and you know i had to i had to grow into that i couldn't just you know wake up one day and say, okay, well, I'm going to accept her as whatever. It just had, it had to, it had to grow and not only me, but Layla herself, she had to make a decision that this guy is going to be in my life. We need to work together to, to bring, to, to work on a relationship. Um, I have a next question here from Ms. Triple M. So the time you wanted, I think this is for Tanya. Oh. So the time you wanted to call it quits, was it when he wasn't understanding that Leia, Layla was the ultimate choice of yours? Oh no! I mean, Layla was never a breaking point for us because he was, he was, he was receptive. For I think it was something for someone who's not a parent. I totally get that. Like you have to get used to it. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, I don't know if I could deal with walking into a relationship with a, with a person with a male that that had a kid because it's a lot of understanding. So coming from that background, I I often try to put myself in this position, and and I think through. Obviously, you don't you you don't introduce the child to the to your the person that you're dating right away. Right. Um, but when you do make that connection, it's important that it's not forced. That it's and kids, believe it or not, mm -hmm. they know. They do. Like, they know. They do. That 
Kiki is not the Thank right you. person. Like you. they know that Sherrod is. I don't like. I don't connect with them. I don't feel. No, don't touch me. Okay. So with with that with that I feel like. I, in. Yeah. With that, mm -hmm. I feel like once you do make the introduction, whether it's six months, whether it's a year, ours our introduction wasn't um right away. It was was it like a year? Was it? I yeah, mean, because someone's they, asking that met, now. He met Layla at the photo shoot. So when? But, when, but that was business, mm -hmm. right? After that was maybe like six to twelve months. It was a while. Yeah, it was a while. It was not. And it let was me not tell you, right you away. should yeah. not introduce if you're dating someone and it's not the father. You should not introduce the child because you Good want to point. make sure that it's this is gonna, secure exactly. and it's going to go somewhere and that the person is someone that you can see your child being. I mean, because I wasn't point. dating to be for dating's sake. I was dating. Tanya was dating to get married, yeah, everybody. No, okay, we gotta, we're gotta. about to get there, too. But anyway, All right. mm -hmm. but yeah, so so to answer Ms. Triple M's question, um, anything that was a breaking point for me was something that had to do with us. Nothing to do with the child. Nothing so to do with the child. All right, let's talk about good stuff now, which is not good stuff, but what are, what were some of the challenges that your relationship faced? <laughs> <laughs> um, time, communication, selfishness. Um, distractions, women. Um, let's talk. Let's talk, Sharad. I, I need to talk. When you say distractions and women, because these people are going to start asking, what do you <laughs> mean by the distractions and women? Well, you know, as my career grew um, as a photographer, I, I, found, I found that a lot my the attention towards who the person was taking the photos grew more and more. And, and so... <laughs> You know, distractions like other women like trying to get my attention. Oh my god, I love your work. Well, we can get oh. to that point right now, Tonya. Bring it on, Sharon. Sorry, continue. Go ahead. <laughs> it's fine. Right, so like distractions like that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you're such a great photographer. Oh, that masked Tonya's corn. That really did. Oh my god. Distractions, women. Everyone, Sharon's talking about things that would have, you know, mm -hmm. interfered. Not interfered, but any challenges they would have had in their relationships. And so I hit the point of distraction and other women because he's a photographer. Of course, some really attractive, beautiful women are gonna come before that camera. Tanya's there, let's go. You were talking. I mean, like even like sometimes in her presence, like the things that women would do to get my attention, it was just, it was unbelievable. And so, you know, it started to affect our relationship. Um, we had, we had, we had we had our challenges where that was concerned and so we had to really like I, me as a as a man i had to really get to the point where i decided like you know tonya is going to be the woman that i focus on because i i needed i knew that i needed based on what i was bringing to the table i knew that i needed a woman who was going to have purpose and a woman who who had her own goals and her own vision and her own dreams and i you know it's like you're pretty, but okay. What else? Do you, what else do you bring to the table? You yes, know what I mean. Yes. Um, and I find that a lot of men get caught up in that. Uh, this girl fine. This girl fine. This girl. But I think, based on what's what I've seen out there, a lot of women just they don't they don't bring anything other than a pretty face to the table. And so, you know, we had our challenges. We had our breakups. We had our makeups. Um, and we really sat down maybe two years ago and said, look, is this something that we want to do? And if we want to do it, we're going to do it long term. Right. Um, and this was before I even like, thought about proposing and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, we need to do this long term. Mm -hmm. So we put everything on the table and we said, look, I want to be with you. And so this is what we need to do. This is what we need to do to happen. This is, this is how we need to control those things that could be distractions towards us. This is, this is how me like i had to do my own building i had to do my own growth i had to do my own i had to find myself on so many levels spiritually professionally yes. i had to find myself you know just as a man what do i want to do with my life mm -hmm. and once i figured that out i was like it was like shooting straight forward full stream ahead, full stream ahead. Mm -hmm. tanya challenges Sherrod being a photographer uh, one of the best in the country and he's shooting these women coming from all over the world, from skimpy clothing and all of that stuff. 
How did you feel about that? What was your breaking point in there? Was there any restrictions? Like you didn't want him to shoot certain things anymore? Because he's a lifestyle photographer. But of course, there will be people that come at him who would want to shoot certain ways. How did you feel about that? Talk to us. Talk to us. How did you um, feel about that? The thing is, and I find a lot of women, um, you, you, when you're with a person mm -hmm. like this, um, like this. <laughs> Why is she talking about? Like Who this. are you talking about like tonight? This. Like yeah. your fiance. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. When you're with a person <laughs> like Sharad, oh. okay. um, you, I mean, just as a woman, you should exude a certain amount of confidence, right? So maybe if I talk, I mean, you know. Someone's asking that now. What was your insecurities about his shoots? Oh no, I for the most part I didn't have many insecurities. What I wanted, which is what he is all about for the most part is communication, right? Mm -hmm. So when he didn't communicate, it was uh-huh. Yeah, stop me right for this. I didn't need you to tell me what's going on. So what I disliked was you're a person that does X and men are not good with multitasking. When you normally do X, right? Mm -hmm. When you don't do X for this particular project, something ain't right. So you like you you y'all ain't good at that. I mean, I'm just saying. So a, a red flag goes up, and it's like, okay, something is settling right. I mean, I talking about women who would come on set, and they know that they're trying to get his attention, and they like they show up like how disrespectful. What's not gonna happen is you're not gonna disrespect me. Okay. Not in front so, of me. So let, me answer, so let me ask a question. Before all of the engagement, right. how do, do you feel being like just boyfriend, girlfriend? Yeah. Does he have to explain this to you at you that point? You don't have point? to. I and mean, I think that's what men, mm -hmm. I think men think that just in general, mm -hmm. they feel like, oh, they have to check in and report and explain. No, no, no. Um, mutual respect mm -hmm. because guess what? You want me to respect you. And a form <coughs> of that is you saying to me, Okay, Tanya, da 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 da, and that's me saying to you, okay, this is what I have to do, right. which is fine. But what? Uh, don't don't do it. I can see straight through it. I know you like him. Is a reason why I like him too. Women tend to hearts because you think we know when people like I our mean, men, right? I okay. mean, and that's okay. You know, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with like you, um, you being fond of his work, being right. fond of, you think he's attractive. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing. But you know he have a, you know he have a girlfriend. You, you know he have a fiance. Well, a fiance now. You, you oh, was the girlfriend. Right, right, right. right, right. Yeah. right. right. So, you, you, no. you could like him, papa. I, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. So, but like, you're leveled you know, off you know, now like, with Sherrod. Yeah, no, no, we're it. good. But, but I, to backtrack, I think with any relationship, you should go in with a certain amount of confidence. If you're going into, and if you're in, if you're in a relationship with someone that's in the spotlight per se, and you are the person who's in the background, personally, I had no problems being in the background because for me, I had my own thing going on. I had my career popping. I didn't need to be the photographer's girlfriend. I was the XXX manager. I was the I was the this. I was the buyer. I was the spa manager i was this so i didn't need to i didn't need a part of the spotlight and that's one of the reasons why reasons why it was attracted to me because I i'm about like, to ask him that now because right. tanya is here blowing well she's saying I'm that that's my own horn. yeah so i want to that that's, so that's one my... of the reasons why wait, reasons i feel like he was attracted to me because i had my own life i wasn't i wasn't like Up in his grill yeah it wasn't no um um let me oh please take me with you on my shoots um, um, I need you, please come and be with me. No, so no, let me ask, I, let me ask, I, I just, let me ask from the man. Kind of let me ask from the man himself. I don't want to cut you off, but Sherrod, yeah. what attracted you to Tonya? Go. What did attract you to Tonya? I don't want to hear about that dress because we talked about that white. Pop out. Yeah, at the beginning. No, it was a white, it was white pants. Oh, oh white oh, pants. Oh my oh, God, sense of hearts. Sherrod, really, pants. he loved those white pants. All right. And so. she wore them on purpose. Oh. She knew what she was, y'all know what y'all be doing. Oh. Y'all know what y'all do to get the man's attention. She wore these white pants on. Oh, Manipulation. Oh, you, know white, you know what a black woman in white pants? And that was 10 years ago. Hey, but anyway, so, right, question, right? Yes, question. what attracted you? Right, to um, What time is it? I think uh, 
one of the things that attracted me to her was was because she was like she said like she had her own goals and she had things that she wanted to do and she wasn't so much like I need you I want you and things like that it was very much the independence and um, her 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 sense of independence and her sense of I think being a becoming a mother changed her a lot and mm -hmm. I think it made her focus more on it made her become a hustler and it made her become smarter and it made her become more thought driven and more focused and those things just from conversations as friends of like okay this this one is kind of different right she's she's different from other women that I would have dated or spoken to and so that you know I, I yeah she's a very attractive woman and I you know that's a plus great physique that's a plus but to me it was that the, the brains and I think any real man will say they will always go for the brains those other things are just like add-ons that are right. like a plus. Like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, she's nice. So that's a plus. She's nice face, nice, nice body. Nice. That's a plus. But it's if that's all you bring into the table, then it's not gonna last. It, you gotta have that brain and you gotta I have agree. that vision I agree. to keep. I think to keep a re, a true mind, especially when that man is someone who like I want family, I want career, I want my, I want to be able to have purpose, whether it's giving back or doing something with the gifts that I've been given. Right. Uh, you need someone that's gonna compliment that. And mm -hmm. if you just, every day you're looking for someone to say, oh, you're so pretty, that's not the type of relationship I was I was looking for. And so she really brought a different perspective. She really brought a different um, change of scenery for me. And so it was refreshing and I was like, and I got her to eat sushi. So ah, that was our first date. We went, we went to Seafront when it was by the bridge. Like so when, it was, when it was first ago. open, and she was Ooh, like, I don't know, sushi. Uh, Sharat, on my show, Fake Talk, sushi is like almost forbidden. I think Freddie yeah. talked about some sushi. Oh. When you take a girl on the first date, you take her for some sushi. You said that before. I don't know if y'all was on it, but like people just hit on the sushi. But Tanya, what attracted you to Sharad? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> um, I like coming from my previous relationship, so... Mm -hmm. I would have been in a relationship for about eight years and then my daughter came so he was totally different to totally like opposite end of the spectrum different um it wasn't I, I i don't i shouldn't say that but anyway it was totally different um he was self-employed mm -hmm. which means he had ambition mm -hmm. um sushi is great um sushi Right. Okay. Um, he was he was driven. He was goal oriented. Very focused. That attracted you to Sharon. For sure. Awesome. Um, and it, initially he used to talk. Now he don't even want to talk to me on the phone for like ten minutes. But he won't get married. I don't understand. Okay. Anyway, um, no. So those things for sure. Mm -hmm. I definitely, and still to this day, mm -hmm. I definitely appreciate how he treats his mother. Oh wow! Definitely appreciates the value that he placed places on family. That is his be all and end all. So um, those things to me were important, and of course, if I'm the distractions are crazy, and 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 you know, I figured, okay, I have a ready made family. Mm -hmm. I have me and my daughter. If I'm gonna move forward with this person in this relationship, then the way that he treats his his immediate family is how he's going to treat us. Yes, ma'am. The importance that he places on his immediate family is what he's going to place on us. Mm -hmm. And I find that, for me, backtracking, there was a point where all I wanted to give my daughter was a family. Like, that's all I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so, I was like, the fact that I couldn't give that to her with the previous relationship was, was really, like, it took me a lot to get over that. Um, and I figured, okay, if this is someone I want to be with and this is what he's bringing to the table, then I could roll with that. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I got you. Um, that's something that was very important to me. Like, I could do it by myself. I mean, obviously close to this point, not up to this point, but close to this point. I did it by myself for years. Mm -hmm. Not that her dad wasn't around, but as far as 
let's just be real, 80% of the responsibility is mine because she, she lives, lives with, with me. You. Right, exactly. Right, and even right. after we, we were done a year after she was born or six months after she was born, and it was my responsibility whether you put $5 in my hand or whether you take her out for lunch or whatever the case was, it was still my responsibility. So I did it by myself for such a long time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I said the next person who is there is going to be I, their their focus has to be fa like they have to be family driven, mm -hmm. and so and want to provide and want to do all this. Stuff. And that's so, for you. And so that was a, that was like a big thing for me. There's a whole sushi conversation going on I right see now. That. Sure. I see I that. You opened up the gate for sushi, and everyone's <laughs> talking about sushi. There's so many comments here. I don't know if I can read all, but uh, Guidantry is saying sushi is great. Miss Gigi asks, what's it with men and sushi? And he answers her by saying, <laughs> I am straight. Gigi, every man who eats sushi was turned onto it by a female. Sherrod, wow. was you turned no, on to sushi? No, no, no. Being, 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 I mean, I was off in school for a, a number of years. <laughs> and so I was, the friendships that I had built with, you know, people from all over the world, mm -hmm. um, I was introduced to so many different types of culture. And a, a part of that culture was, uh, the a part, parts of those culture like ate a lot of sushi and there was this restaurant in there the dorms and I would go with my friends we go every Friday night and the first time I was like raw fish I, I don't know guys I tried it and I got hooked like this was years ago before it became the trend in Nassau the sushi. and so coming home and I found out that we had a sushi restaurant opening I was like ah! Oh, we gotta go right yeah. and so i told tanya same reaction raw fish i don't know, yeah, I don't know. right I and so i think she came because she wanted to impress me and <laughs> <wanted> to, <laughs> I she, so. she kind of wanted to make it seem like she could get down she could right. ride and, you right know, so so she came along and i introduced her to sushi and and she we've been i mean i love i we go like at least once sometimes twice a week just Very depending nice. on on what's happening all right so tell me what was the strongest peak of your relationship the strongest I mean the one the thing that brought out the best in you the strongest point because you know sometimes you're at your weakest and at the lowest that's when you want to just throw in the towel but then you get to a point when it's like hey this is it the strongest and what okay let's get straight to it Gerard what was it for you to pop the big question. It's always on the mind. Yeah, always this is this mind. is this is on uh, you because and this is I think this is where you know before popping the question, I can imagine that the relationship may have encountered some things for you to think about and say, well, you know, we're here now, and I believe that this is it. How did you arrive after? How long were you dating first before the engagement? You all were together from oh, Layla was about eight, one. Eight years. Yeah. Okay, so eight Another years. Another eight years. Eight years. So you all. It, it was dating for eight years, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you got engaged. Mm -hmm. What got you to that point to say, I am ready to do this? Um, you know, we, like I was, like I said before, we had a lot of, we, we'd broken up, you know, a few times yeah. um, during that period. And because the, I, the last- so, so, I don't want to stop you, just for the viewers sake of point, because they're going to come back and ask you, what would have caused the breakup, the one thing, I mean, just, just their communication. Uh, Tanya know. is an alpha female. Mm -hmm. I'm an alpha male. Okay, alpha female, so alpha male. Okay. We hit those explosive, like moments when it's like, I I don't want to deal with you. Goodbye. And who right? would be the one to make up? Me. You would be the one to say that you're sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that that. It's still something that we've work with work on right i find that i find that i think just women generally don't like to ever admit when they're wrong for doing something or never admit when they when they would have contributed to whatever the disagreement whatever the argument is and you know people culture always says well you're the man you're supposed to apologize you're supposed to break the ice you're supposed to go back and say look we need to talk about this and we've been brainwashed to believe that that's what's supposed to happen every single time which can which makes no sense in a marriage because a marriage is two people, two, right? Two way, yeah. It's two people that both have to do equal work to make it work. Um, but at the time, you know, we even though we were apart, like we was, I think whatever kept us coming back, that there was that time, the last time I would say when we came back, we said, look, this doesn't make any sense. Either we 
stick and I think I, I said to her either we stick it out and we do what we're supposed to do or we walk away it doesn't make any more any sense to keep going back and forth and I think that for her was like whoa this is I'm not used to him talking like this he's usually just well if you want to go go that's usually that's what my attitude was because you know your ego and right. you know I, I don't need you like you know how many women I can get? Like, I, like, why are you even freaking yourself out for no reason? So, for me, it was, I, I went through a huge change, like the last breakup. It was like, okay, career, my career is gonna grow. That's yeah. no question. Right. My spirituality started to grow, yes. like crazy. Yes. Like, I was just like, I need to get, become closer with God again. I yes. need to start to build my faith, because my faith was affecting my career. And as I started to build my faith, my career changed, like it was changing. And I'm wow. like, okay, man, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. And then I would ask myself, well, what do you want? And I told, I, my, I kept, I knew the answer. I just didn't want to admit it. And when I finally admitted it, it was like, I want to be a husband. I want to be a father. And I want to be a person of, of professional influence wow. in my career. And so when I answered myself, because my faith grew, I knew the, I knew what the answers was. I just didn't want to answer myself. Mm -hmm. I, we just we, we cross paths again. You know that love doesn't die. Like you know, it, you get angry and you I'm not talking to him or I'm not talking to you. And then you you even date in between. And if it's meant to be, you are, you're gonna always come back, no matter how hard you fight it. And both people because if i if Tony didn't want it we wouldn't have been here today yes so if she didn't decide this is who i want to work with to to move further in life if she didn't make that decision then me coming back and saying look we need to iron out all of our differences all of our challenges and make a decision to move forward otherwise this don't make this don't make no sense and you know she she resisted because she's very stubborn she resisted I, I, you will run after me you will run after me <laughs> I'm, not, I'm the woman. I'm not gonna run after you. So it was a lot of like I had to break her down and break. I'm like, and I got to the point where I literally put my foot. I'm like, either you want it or you don't. So make a decision. And when I did that, stretch, patty straw. Oh, oh, okay. We get okay, okay. But no, you know what I mean. Yes, you know what I mean. I you know when the man puts his foot down, what, what that does for I you as a woman. What so I think that for her was like a okay. He wants to take the lead. Yeah. I am gonna be the woman who's going to follow the lead. Yes. And 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 uh. then, and then the, the wheel started turning for propose time. Time to yeah. propose. Yeah. I think something in there that you said that's very valid, and I hope the viewers heard it. When you had that break, you found a place with God. And See? that is where See? your faith that is where your <laughs> and your <laughs> faith came up. Oh, they, oh God. they're gonna pop going. Oh God. <laughs> Question here. I don't want to. I don't want to um, stop people's question. I really. Way. I'm here. Oh uh, Razor Romaine says, "Have you ever started to do something because of each other's influence?" Have you ever what? Started have you ever? Something. Have you started to do something? Have you started to do something because of each other's influence? What does that mean? If you wanted to explain, I can get it to explain. Yeah. If you can Razor, explain. Yeah. could you just uh, elaborate more on that question, please, so that they can they can answer. So, have you had to make major sacrifices besides the child for your partner, Sharad? Yeah, my, my sacrifice was putting my work second. Yeah. Um, you know, I would never postpone a meeting. I would never cancel a shoot. I would, it was always money first, money first, money first. Client is more important. Um, until I made a decision, if, if Tanya and Layla are going to be my priority, they have to come first. And so my sacrifice was really, that was a big a challenge for me because it's like I could lose money, I still have to pay bills, I still have to live, like I could turn away money and I've done that mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's good now, like it's good. Like I, if she needs something, she comes first. Layla needs something, Layla comes first. But then also, as a woman, she she doesn't take advantage of it. Because you know you can easily take advantage yeah. of it. Well, well, like for example, Freddie can always come when I call him. Yeah. But there are times when he can't. Because yes. his job is also important to him. Exactly. And as a woman, you need to understand that. Right. You can't always come first. Yes. 
technically you do come I first, do first right? right but you know that he has his duties as a man responsibilities, responsibilities yes. also because yes. that takes care of the home and yes. that allows him to provide exactly so i think as a woman you have to understand that not every time you're going to come first and for her the sacrifice was understanding that understanding that she's not always going to be number one even though she is number one mm -hmm. um and you know being a bachelor being self-employed you're self-employed alone your job is number you one because you have to be every position in your company this so you true. cannot think about nothing else comes before that this is true when you take on a wife when you take on a child different ballgame yeah. but like you said, balance. It's, balance. it's about it's about balance. balance. Is key. Yeah. So Tanya, I'm um, tell me when Shirai came back to you, if it was just still on a dating level, were you prepared to continue oh, no. to move that forward with him? No. That wasn't gonna happen. No. no. So if he did, because not... at some point I read and I, I I'm not a read the book. This would it say, and you must do it in order to get a response from a male. But I read in a book that. Steve Harvey wrote actually. Mm -hmm. It said, You don't have a ring because you didn't ask for it. No, I got the questions coming in. Okay. Go ahead. Go so, ahead. I said, Listen, this is how long we've been together. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? I used to work for a, 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 a really influential Bahamian, and that's he, he said that all the time. I mean, Jeepers, what are we doing? We have to focus. <laughs> right? But but seriously, okay. I said, what, what am I doing? So we took a break. Let me backtrack. I, we took a break. I said, listen, we're not on the same page. Um, I was at that point where I was maturing up. My, 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 my baby is my child. Your baby is your work. You are focused on your work. And for all those reasons, he said, which is totally, they're totally plausible. I get that. You're hustling. You have to do this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, oh, she said my voice shuffle. Okay. So, yeah. you know, I got that, that that was his baby. Layla was my baby. So I said, we're not on the same page. And for women, it's important to realize when you and your partner, whether it's your, I mean, your boyfriend, obviously, y'all are not on the same page. If you and someone are not on the same page, you know, you, you, you already know. You're going in two different directions. You go to church, he don't go to church. He partying, you home. You know, he only want to hang out with you certain times. He's more concerned with his boys. Like that sort of thing. I mean, that's not only it, but I mean, just you know there are certain signs. He's not on the same, you know, he's, oh, you're not on the same page. But, he's crashing no, no, up. it's fine. Okay. Um, so, so what I said was, let's take a break. I traveled, I worked. I put into Layla for about, I would say, about nine to twelve months, and and after that he found me. And guess what? There was no bad blood. We 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 ended on a, a pretty good note. We didn't hate each other. We just decided to part ways. Um, I ref I still referred clients to him, like I did all that stuff. But like, I mean, it didn't make sense. If we weren't, he said he wasn't ready to get married. I said, okay, no, like, no problem. I was a little hurt, but I was like, okay. And then, so we parted, and then a couple months later, he came back and he said, I have a plan. I got a lot of questions here, so we okay. got a rule. Go um, was it really necessary to know everything from your partner's previous relationship? Both of them. Yeah. I don't think you're ever going to know everything, but the most important things, yes. I don't ever, I mean, I don't think we ever had those kind of conversations. Yeah, we never. It's like, well, tell me about your ex or tell me yeah. about your last It was not a concern. But there was, there were things that I noticed in her. I'm like, where is this coming from? This has to be coming from how the you past. dealt with things in the past. Yeah. Right. So she had to check that because I was, I, I, I'm not the same person that you were with. And for me, I couldn't treat her as though she was the same woman that I was with. And so we didn't have a conversation like, okay, from A to Z, right, tell what, me. what happened in right, your act, right, whatever. Right, right. But, you know, we'd have arguments. She would just immediately go from zero to 60, where I'm just like, <laughs> calm down, calm down. But that's how she was in her last relationship. They're, they might have both been like, chung, like, right, 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 right. And then right. the clapping hands, and then the grabbing, and the pointing, and the, <laughs> you know, you always do that. You always grab the air. You'll be like, sweet boy, listen. <laughs> her, 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 this her. is good. Right? This um, is good. So, to me, I had to be like, Tony, that's not me. Why are you talking to me like that? Even today, to this day, 
I still have to tell her, Tanya, calm down. I am not speaking to you like that. Talk to me. Don't, like, you gotta, you gotta. Not all of this. Yeah, all you gotta, of that. you gotta. I don't do turn all that it down. You gotta, you gotta, you know. Me? Oh, wow. Man, if you faced up with your girlfriends, you could send some hearts across the screen for Sherrod. I don't know how many. Oh, we got a lot of right in the house. Oh, my God. So let's say, ta 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 Oh, my God. I just saw a whole string of hearts yeah. just holding up. They never know what to say. Oh, know what wow. to say. I have another question. We got to roll. Um, did her daughter's father ever intentionally cause a problem for you? Ever? No. No. So I got that question. He's never caused a problem, all right? <laughs> Will you say sorry? Sweet boy. Oh my God. They, uh, hold on. Will you ever say sorry? You got to, to grip the end too sure. Oh my God. This is... Profile. You cannot beat someone with the old. Hi stuff. guys. Hi. I have a whole heap of questions. Okay. No, no, no. You're sorry, reading the sorry, current sorry, ones. Sorry, I'm, sorry, sorry, sorry. Will you say sorry to your partner even if it's not your fault? I've, I've had to learn how to do that. I'm glad that she said that. I already spoke to that. Oh, someone says, uh, Siobhan says, nice couple. I could feel the love. Congratulations. Thank oh, you. Rob, have you ever seen each other at your absolute worst? I think so. Well, yeah, it I depends think, what the worst I, I is, so. but I mean, our worst, yeah. My worst has been like not having enough money to put gas in my car, or put groceries yeah. in the fridge, yeah. and she's definitely seen me during that point, and then... You know, her moments would have been like having to deal with being a single mother, having to deal with being a woman, or being a strong woman on a workforce dominated by men and the challenges that she faced with that. And just being at a very low point. I think we both, I think we both have seen each other like at, at, at those points, so yeah. All right. Guy Dre says, were you ever pressured to pop the by friend, pop by friend? And family, and if you were, did it propel you to act sooner, push it back further? I don't understand the, pop question. the, question. Pop the question. Pop the question. Pop the question. I think it's probably typos in here. Were you ever pressured to pop by the question, the by friends and family? And if you were, did it propel you to act sooner um, or to push it back whew. further? Um, yeah, I mean, I was. I did feel a lot of pressure um, because there was a point. Let me tell you, I hit like such a bad streak of luck. One, her best friend got married. She stood in her best friend's wedding. Her sister got married a couple weeks later. She stood in her sister's she wedding. She stood in her sister's wedding. Her cousin, her co cousin, Jade, yeah. got mm -hmm. married. She stood, Layla stood in the wedding. Right. So it was like wedding after wedding after wedding. And leaving her the, behind. Right. So she, and she even, she said that to me. She's like, you know, I, I don't want to be in another wedding unless yeah. it's my own. I, I, I declined to stand in another I, wedding. I, I, I said, agree. I'm not standing in any more weddings until it's my own. I agree. So I, agree. I did feel pressured and then we split. Yeah. Um, because, because, I, because, I, because I said, I know, told her, I, I'm, nobody's going to force me to do right. anything. And so I said, it's okay. No worries. So I, but you see, I, uh, again, uh, it speaks to the culture because mm -hmm. no one should, you know, when you're ready. Yeah. So you shouldn't feel, you shouldn't allow outside forces to dictate right. to you, you are 25, you are 35, you are 45, you should be married by this time. You right. should have kids by this time. Our right. culture like slams that on us yeah. every day. You gotta have a kid, you gotta be married yeah. by this. Like if you, it's so stupid to me. And so it was heavily influencing her and that was coming into our relationship. Mm. And ev I would say this, you can't force a man to marry you. Correct. You don't give him an ultimatum, this is true, like correct. He, because he will be doing it for the wrong reason. He correct. will be doing it to appease because, you. Ah, Both people have to be ready. Both people have to be happy in the relationship first correct. before you can even take that step. Yeah. So when she came at me with the, uh, I'm like, right. okay, I'm out. You right. didn't say okay, you out. You put your. I asked him. I you said, said okay, I'm out. yeah. I said, I said, okay. This is what we're faced with. This is what I want. I know that that, that I want to be with you. I want a future. What say you? He said, well, I'm not ready to get married. I don't want to get forced. I said, okay, no problem. So right. there I go. And I just, my career took off after that. And it was, it was really no issue. But I will say this. I think th at the point, in, in retrospect, I think at that point where he said he wasn't ready, uh, after I took a step, I took that year or so that we were apart to get to know myself. And I got to know myself so much that when he came back, I was like, 
Yeah. I didn't say so, that. Not even that. Like, I, I show up. I won't do this. No, because, no, so, because, because you get to find I'm, out. I'm content with yes, myself. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I knew that at that point, I could not, if I were to walk into a marriage with him mm -hmm. or pressure him to get, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been right. And so I say to any woman, get to know yourself, make yourself whole, know who you are so that when you walk into a marriage, they say don't get better, they're worse. But, but when you walk into that marriage, you're complete. And so you don't expect the man to complete you. And, and when, the, when he does come with the whole, you know, okay, I'm ready to get married or whatever, I always feel nothing before it's time. It's the right time. If you force a man, it's not going to work. Women, women always, women are ready to be married from their like 16. Correct. From watching a bunch of Disney movies. Oh, this is true. From their little children. Four, I can tell six, you about that. eight, yeah, ten. Right. A, a little girl knows what, what that, that Prince Charming lifestyle is like. Yes. yes. And then culturally, as Caribbean people, yes. mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's you magnified. Yeah. Right. So your friends are telling you, girl, when you get married, girl, he ain't proposed to you yet, girl, he ain't this girl. It's a bunch of BS to me. You both people got to be ready. And as a woman, you might be ready to be married, but you might not be a complete woman who's ready Correct. to give herself as yeah. a wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like as a wife, a woman yeah. doesn't marry a wife. Yeah, you, you become a, a wife when you get married. Yeah. You have to be on a certain level to be, yeah. to be considered a wife. Yeah. You can't let your friends, your parents, your godparents tell you why you ain't married yet. Y'all been dating for two years. Y'all been dating for five years. You have to be a complete person yeah. to then to then add to someone else's life. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't think that I was ready. In hindsight, I was still I, I wasn't selfish as a person, but I was selfish to the point where I don't want anything to interact with me and my daughter. Like we good, this is my daughter. I don't want, I don't know if I want. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was still selfish to that point. I still thought of us as this is the complete family. How am I gonna get him in there? You know what? I, I don't think I'm. I have a good good it. question here, and we really want to be very transparent with the viewers. Did you guys date other people during your breakup? Was there any yeah. attractions? Yes. Did you date other people? Yes. Talk to us. Yeah. We dated, of course, That's because we were broken up. The last like, time was like we were like split for like a year. Yeah. So we and dated. We dated and we, one and year. we spoke about it. I mean, we you yeah, know she so much every time she. So did you date? That's that'd be like her first question. Did right? You, did you that, date somebody? Who did you her? date? Who did you date? Who did you date? And then, speak, but I would never. I didn't care. Men no. don't care. I didn't care. No, I but just as a woman, I just she would know. Like, oh, I oh, like. Did you date that girl? Or how many girls did you but, date? But but you know what? To be honest, I didn't even have to ask that so much. Like we had a conversation about it, and then like one day he was like, "See the girl there? Yes, I did." I was like, "Is he really?" So you all did date other people during the breakup. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of healthy, isn't it? You get it to see, you really get to see if you know I want to be out here or I. What do you think about it? I mean, no, I the think last, it's fine. The, when we were broken up last time, the last the girl that I dated, like seriously, like she brought me back to the church, right? Oh, <laughs> you kidding me? Oh, she, she brought me back, back to, to the, the church, church right? Wow. And so, <laughs> but it, you know, it was a learning lesson for sure because she was like too like too like oh, how do i put this you know there are people that that are spiritual and their faith is very mature with the point to the point where they don't they don't have to advertise it right and then you have those christians who are like you can know i'm a christian like oh, the, the I, 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 i'm gonna answer the phone bless the lord bless right? <laughs> like like she was so, hardcore. Oh my like, god! And, and I said, you know, this is gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna learn from this. So you know something, Sharad? <laughs> you know, she served a good purpose, though. She she, she took did. you and back. I, to a place. And I even. I said, we were out one day, and I we were in the van, and I said, Tony, this is that's so the, good. That's, that's the girl. girl. And I, I I I call her Jesus Jesus. That's my nickname for her, because she was like hardcore. Like she into Jesus. Like have a blessed day. Like everything was blessed. But Holy she never comes down. No, she never comes it was down. always like, ah, right. and I'm not like, I'm more like a. You were there. I'm more like know, a down yeah, low. Let yeah, me focus on my yeah, own faith. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was interesting to, to a, it was interesting. Good. I have a good question here. What are you both looking forward to most about marriage? You go first. No, you go. No, you go first. He's a gentleman. You go first. Oh, ladies first. Ladies first. My, my answer is, is prolific. So you <laughs> So prolific. Um, you know what? It's a genius. Yeah. It's a genius. <laughs> oh, everybody.
already Tanya blushes and her cheeks go real high. And Gerard is showing me that right now. She's blushing. Oh, and see, hashtag everyone. Hashtag give Kiki more, time. more time. Once we do that, we know that Instagram is it's one day going to give her more time. time. Because these sessions are really, 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 really good. But we're going to ask that, answer that question that was asked. Um, <laughs> She what she are you two? <laughs> what are you two looking forward to most in the marriage? Um, you know, we've never lived together. That's gonna be interesting because I can see myself saying, yeah. "Pick this up off the ground." So they've but never lived together. You're no, looking forward to living no. together, so, okay? Yeah, and fun stuff, like you know. And fun stuff. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. <laughs> that was so crazy. And fun stuff. Sharad, what are you looking forward to most? Okay, go ahead. What are you looking forward um, to most? For me, it's the fact that I of being in an environment where she lets me be me. I think that's very important in a, in any relationship. I think because you you behaving women are very unique and very gifted. Because you guys want to be the accountant, the pastor, you're the mother, you're the wife, the you're, the, you're the traffic director, you're do the this. police officer. Do that. Don't do that. So you, Say you that. I think you you guys come into a relationship wanting to change, like change the person. Yeah. But I think as I we grew, with that. as we grew, mm -hmm. um, she she is really accepted my flaws as well as my strengths and has allowed me to make mistakes on my own and learn from them, um, be myself without having to feel pressured into doing anything or being somebody that I'm not. And being a support system um, for the things that I want to do and vice versa. But having somebody in your life who, who allows you to be yourself without influence. I mean, there's still moments where she's like, babe, you can't wear that awesome t-shirt. Yeah. You can't, you know, you can't wear that t-shirt to the meeting. You can't do this. You can't do that or whatever. Um, she, she allows me to be me. And then with her, like, I allow her to be herself because we learned in marriage, you don't actually become more like one another. You become yeah. more on a life. Like, you, you, you become more different. And as you grow older, even in marriage, the older you become in the marriage, the more you go into your own selves as individuals. Yeah. And so we, once we figured that out, I think things that I say doesn't don't upset her as much anymore. Vice versa. I mean, it's it's I could see the blossoming, mm -hmm. and the blossoming and the journey is it, it it looks really interesting to me. And I'm like excited. I'm like excited. Ah, uh, you know, to hear a man say that, that's so old. She'll wow. talk and talk and talk. And I'm like at the point where like, I just know she's just going to talk. And I, I just and I'd to, say to him, to are you listening? And he's like, uh. The people here are very impressed that eight years and you never lived together. No. How do you feel about that? Do you feel that couples should live together first or wait? You know that, sorry, can I take this? Mm -hmm. You know that's interesting because my the primary reason I didn't uh, live with him was because I had a daughter, mm -hmm. and I didn't I didn't. She was also not my daughter's father. I wasn't raised like that. But more importantly, I didn't want her to see that because I and and I also wasn't quite sure where the relationship was going. I know what his intentions were. I know where his heart was, but I didn't need you to show that, and he wasn't showing that to me. So I said, I mean, he he didn't. Put is he didn't put it forward like you you could tell me I'm gonna marry you we're gonna get married I want to be a family I want to have a family with you but there was nothing tangible right so I thought you know we can do this but whenever it becomes tangible then we'll make that step I don't want her like I already had out of wedlock kaboom um but I don't want to add insult to injury so when it happens we will do it the right way. Awesome. Um, so that was just me. Mm. That is that is a good that, that is a me. good answer, Tanya, because a lot of people were concerned about that. A question for Sherrod: What advice would you give men on the fence, like they are looking at rings online but ain't really sure? That's coming from Freddie. Um, <laughs> pretty funny, Jack. I mean, I can that. speak to that because I was I was there. I was on the fence, mm -hmm. but you know, boy, let me tell you, faith is something else because. 
Faith. That, that. <laughs> on finding faith. Right. On finding faith, faith. <laughs> um, it happened in steps for me. Like, I had to get my faith right first, right? I had to know where my career was going first. I had to know that once I make this decision, there's no turning back. And Tonya had to understand that if I go in this direction, you have to come with me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, once I knew, like the, those three things that I talked about before, I, I had to ask myself, I had to answer some questions that I had, like, you know, what do you want to be in life? Where do you want to go? And what do you want to do with your life? So once I answered those questions, and I decided, you know, I, I'm going to move forward. And I know that through my faith and through my belief in, in the things that I do believe in, that everything is going to get better. Everything is going to work out for the better. And as a man, like, I think most, I'm not, sh I'm not sure if, if this is the norm, but I think, I know for me and a lot of guys that are married, you, you had to reach that point where you had to tell you, you had to answer yourself in confidence, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what I want. I want a wife, I want a family, whether it's existing child, and then by extension, new baby. Mm -hmm. And then I have my job, she has her job, or we have our jobs, and we're gonna move forward with that. And through our work, we're gonna have purpose and give back through our own gifts. Mm -hmm. Once I can answer those questions, I was like, so I would say, as a guy, you have to uh, you have to answer you have to ask yourself those things because it doesn't make any sense trying to please society, please culture, your family, your friends by putting a ring on some girl's finger. I mean, anybody can do that. Yeah. It's a lot of it's a wasted it's a lot of money. Yeah. But I mean, anybody can do that. That's not a far fetched thing. The the more important thing as a man is you got to really ask yourself like, is this what I want? And are these three things, am I prepared to be that? Am I, am I prepared to be the man? Am I prepared to be the husband? Am I prepared to be the father? Am I prepared to be this career-oriented male where my career is going to impact people? Like purpose, your faith, and your family. It's like, once you answer those questions, it's, it, was, it was easy for me after I, after I knew that I could confidently answer those questions. When you get married now, do you believe that your circle is going to change? Your relationship, your friendships, are they going to change? Or are you prepared they to They have be... started to change already. They have started to change already. So, so to change talk to us, the viewers, please let them know. When you got, when you were single, it was a crowd of people. There were some yeah. people. So when you got engaged, I can imagine that some people dropped off the list. Yeah. Is it because they were not in that particular engagement circle? Or what was the reason for the drop-offs? Because I can imagine getting married now, you know, when you get married, would you like to be in like-minded relationships with people who are married or you want to have engaged work, it's couples? It's not going to work otherwise because if I'm hanging out with my friends and... Single friends? Oh, yes, correct. Mm -hmm. My single friends and Kiki uh, still go into a bar every weekend mm -hmm. and I'm married and, you know, uh, Sherrod hangs out with his boys and they want to go out every weekend. Then we'll be home. Well, um, obviously, you wouldn't have the problem with your Well, no, kinda, but I'm just saying yeah, that, in that if that's the case, mm -hmm. and well, let's just speak to me. If I'm hanging, if I'm hanging out with my girlfriends and we're we're home, I mean, and we're going out every weekend. You know, when I go out, uh, uh, well, let me just say, it's automatic that any male or female that has a ring on seems to be more attractive, just straight across the board. This is facts, vice versa. Vice versa. I learned that when I was pregnant. Pregnant women seem to attract men. For some Very reason. much so. So women and or men who are married, they're an automatic attraction. So if I'm out there with my single friends, going to the club every weekend, listen. But I mean, we haven't had to, I mean, we have, we've always had a group of friends that are friends with our friends. So our yeah. circle has always kind of been tight knit. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, like in her field, my field, we, we have, a lot of colleagues, associates, people we work with almost on an everyday basis. Right. Yeah. The minute we got engaged, like people that were very close to us, very, very close to us, a small number, our parents included, said, You're you're gonna lose friends. Yeah. You're gonna see who your true friends and you're are. Gonna see. This is true. And you're going to yeah. you're going to attract a different type of people. Like and we've seen that like we 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 go out with very little people that are single, right? 
a lot of our friends are married yeah. and so the the landscape has changed a lot and yeah. even getting closer to the wedding now i mean people are like dropping off like, like flies. flies like a lot of our single friends yeah. because the company we isn't there anymore the mindset and... isn't there anymore yeah. the the goals are different yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Focus your, your is vision different. is different your focus yeah. is different and so people that don't get that are going to slowly rem they're either going to remove themselves i mean yeah. we haven't had to literally remove Cut anybody but they were but they themselves. were falling off yeah. they, they, they were yeah. falling off yeah. and so i mean it's it's and it's not like you're not happy that people move away but i mean it's like i i find everybody that i like i don't have to talk to my friends every day my real friends i don't have to talk to them every day um and and, and then as you get older like it takes a lot of energy yeah. Like so, if I if I call you and if we we haven't spoken for like a week or a couple I don't know a couple of days and like you have an attitude with me, Miss, I am an entrepreneur. I'm a mother. I'm a fiance. I'm a I'm a me. I'm a woman. I I try to get all these things together and you have an attitude because I ain't talk to you, Miss. Pick up the phone, call me. And if you don't call me, it, like it's no pressure. But don't come on, man. This don't make like, it a big. Yeah, man. When is the new baby, y'all? So what? When are you all planning on having she this baby? She can tell you when she can get bigger. <laughs> get bigger. Oh God, what is this today? This session is so good that the people behind the scenes are just cracking up, all right? This is this is just that good. Tonya, when is you? when are you prepared to have a, a baby? Big up. How I'll soon after the marriage? Nah, we, we probably gonna do it right away. Mm -hmm. You're gonna probably do it right I'll away. I'll woman name, big up, big up. All right, <laughs> let me read some comments. Nails big up, I'll see. Big up. Okay, uh, all right, baby. Okay, so these, nails, these people look at my company, man. All right, so Nail Spike Utel says, absolutely amazing interview, so real and transparent. God bless you all. Juju Locke says, Sherrod, I respect you, bro. Tanya, you win. Finally, um, yeah, someone comments yeah, the man. Yeah, yeah. Finally. Oh, Nails by Cutel said, can't wait for the interview after the wedding. I think I should bring them back. I will bring them back probably when the wedding is, you know, <laughs> she big six up. months. Yeah, she big up. yeah. She big I'm, up. I'm probably going to bring them back. Once you request it, I will bring them back. I could wear the um, same dress, actually. Guidance Mike says, my friends have to change. Yeah. Um, is this... Uh, Pia Dia. Pia Dia says, because single people encourage single people with single things. Same. All right. Um, Denny Boo says it's supposed to change. <laughs> all about? right, all right. I'm just trying to, I'm just skimming through. Single niggas don't have curfew. I gotta be Where home by that? 12. Uh, Telgin Baptiste says your circle has to change. So everyone agrees that your circle yeah. has to change. Guiding Mike says plenty of people here trying to downplay this marriage talk. Uh, listen, guys, if you were on this and your girlfriend is here, because I did invite couples to come on tonight, I wanted. Couples to hear from other couples. I think that this is very important. Some of us may be at a place where, you know, we've been with someone for a while. We're contemplating getting married. We're not sure, but you're hearing from a couple, right. all right, that has, that has faced challenges, that has break, broken up to make up. And on the last leg, they understood, you know, that this is what we really want. And so now they're going full force into this and are gonna be married pretty soon. Um, with children, we um, already have a kid. Uh, with more, uh, with kid. children, because Layla is one. Children, children, right? <laughs> how many children do you intend to? Kiki, have? what happened? I'm asking questions for my. How many kids? <laughs> they ain't asked you that. Come on, be flowing. How many kids? I mean, two. But he doesn't have any children so of one. his own. So Sherrod is one good for you to make it. Yeah, we've spoken about it. Um, we've spoken about it. All right. And, uh, we definitely, tree, tree, tree. we definitely want to have. Uh, we just, we just, we gonna focus on. They say that's the Baptist. That's the church finger. Yeah, that's the church finger. Like the hard go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and similar to Freddie and I, I think for Freddie and I, you know, Freddie had his daughter, I had my daughter, and we were like, one will do us sufficient, and that would be ours. But you know, everyone is our children, so there's no separation in that. All right. Um, any more questions before we sign off? Because this is hot and they would have you all here all night. Is there any other questions for Sherrod and Tonya? What are you looking forward most to the wedding, that wedding day? What is going to be the highlight for you and what is going to be the highlight for you? Oh my God, I just want it to be over. You just I just to want to over. dance and eat. Right, and dance nothing and about eat. your husband. Nothing and about to call him my husband. You see oh how y'all go? Finally. Let me, let me answer that one. Finally. Word. Finally. 
finally. Sharad, do you want a girl or a boy? Guidance ring. I want a healthy child. Want a healthy child. So the sex of the child no. does not matter. I already, I'm already marrying two women. So yeah. another woman, another guy. I mean, it's. I'm just. I'm. I'm just. I just have to pray and keep the faith. Someone says Tonya, you will have twins. Uh, people are saying that Tonya will have twins, and this is more than one person saying this. Pia Dia says, "How long have you been engaged?" Uh, a year. Uh, a year. Already? A year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. And listen, when Sherrod got uh, engaged to Tonya, he did it big. I mean, guys, look here. He I did it big. It I mean, it, it was nice. I mean, it wasn't here. It was not the norm. Like, you know, my husband took me for dinner here. I'm not saying that it wasn't the best because we did it big too. No, I mean, no we one's going to say. Like, oh my God. I mean, Tonya was in like this spinning restaurant on top of. Is it wasn't Drake in that restaurant doing us? Really yeah, I gotta go all the way there. <laughs> you going all the way? In, the, in, in Drake, Canada, Drake was photoshopped on the CN Tower. Oh, he for was. His last uh, album. Uh, yeah. but that was actually that was the spinning. The yeah. So it's, wow. Yeah. Three wow. Look up, look up Megan. And you did your engagement shoot there as well. Yeah. yeah. A year has went by pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. that year. That year. It just was, happened, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Literally. And that is how life happens. You know, that is how life happens. You realize that you're going to get married and it, you know, it's going to be so good that you don't, you, you forget time. You forget, you don't know, track time because I think my anniversary is coming up and sometimes I'm like, is it two, three, four? Yeah. I don't know because right. it's really, you know, when, when you're having fun, you know, time just flies. And I mean, at the end of the day, you just got to thank God when you find a good mate. I think that's important. That's, that's very yeah. Important. When you find a good mate, it doesn't make sense wasting time. It doesn't make sense no. wasting time. And no. you know, there are a lot of marriages today that are getting married because it's feeling sorry for the other person. Exactly. You know, I've been with you for so long, and so I'm gonna do this, but their heart is not there. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you're doing it for, yeah. if you're doing it for the for, for pressure from the family, if you're doing it for a child that's already existing, if you're doing it because you feel sorry for the person. Please don't do it. It's gonna be. A, it's. A, I think. I think relationships and by extension marriages are already a challenge. If you're gonna do it for that, don't do it. Do it because you want to do it. Do it because you prayed about it. Do it because you are ready. And 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 you're not. It's like becoming a parent. You're never gonna be one hundred percent ready. But just know that you're willing to accept this person and their flaws. Mm -hmm. And you know, even I don't know what I'm walking into when I walk into that house and close the door. But I do know that this is what I'm willing to deal with. This is the person that I want to be with, you know, more than anything else. Don't do it for no other reason. Freddie said, you are just ready to be a light born. Throw your L's up, everybody. Listen. I'm a light born, everybody. You, you just welcome to... Oh, she's but, a, I mean, welcome to the club. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I... I Williams at heart. Williams at heart. It's a good place to be. I think the like one got some really good men in it. It's, it's a good place to be. You know, it's a good place to be. Tonya will be joining me on this side of town. Welcome to the like one club, oh you know. <laughs> <laughs> but this session has been really, really good. If there's anything else, uh, people are saying that you look, you guys look really gorgeous. Uh, KJ is here teasing me because when he sang to me, I was snotty. And yes, it was terrible. You were. Oh it was terrible. Guys, if you're going to propose to your woman, make sure she don't need to be snotty up. You know, I couldn't take it. I was literally about to have a heart attack. Snotty. Yeah. You know, and, and my husband was sweating and he was telling me that the food was hot. And I'm like, the food is not hot. Why are you sweating? I believe he thought I would have told him no because he was sweating. Yeah. You know, because here it is, you know, I think Freddie was in a position where, you know, for you all that don't, has never heard my story, I was married at the age of 19 yes, and I got a divorce KJ and, um, you know, it, it's a funny spot for a man to be in. Yeah. Here it is, I'm about to ask a woman, yes, we've been dating, but maybe she's not interested in being married again, you know, so especially, where do I go? Right, especially you know. if there's been a... a separation and time or some space and and there and has been time back. right there has you been come time back and you're not sure like, and it was it was scary for me yeah you know i don't know about you but it was pretty much scary for me even though you know i was there before my thing was am i prepared for this again yeah. you know what is his motive i, I had this block up yeah. but you know i got engaged and that's the best decision i ever made in my life and so you know guys no, don't no. waste time if you if you See. got if you got <laughs> said food was pepper <laughs> so you know, the food was, was pepper. not pepper the food was not pepper, but you know, yeah, guys. She really doesn't come to church because she just asked if, if KJ sings. KJ sing it at the MCC all the time. Why should I put Megan on black? Oh wow, who's Ma Lady Slim? Yeah, that's, that's yes. Megan. Hey, oh oh oh, hey Megan. Lady all right, Slim. so 
we're gonna we're about to end the session but of course you know um i will definitely be bringing sherrod and tanya back but i will bring them back probably six months into the marriage so that we can really hear from them how has it been now living together pardon me sorry <laughs> because they're excited about you know living together and of course let me tell you something Tonya Sherrod may throw his shoes over there and you're not gonna like it but you know men don't believe in women that nag I think we talked about that earlier if your husband puts his shoes there just move it yeah. you know if he drops something there just move it yeah. because I realize you know and eventually as he sees you move it, He'll move he's, it he will move it and I think that you know a lot of times we get in it and we're like this man just leaving his dirty plate here and I had to learn you yeah. know, I, I had to no, learn. No, 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 no. Yeah, because we all come in the relationship with habits. Yeah. You know, like Freddie always say, maybe you may not the woman to snore, snore, you know, and you don't like it, so you kick her out of the bed. And these are things that you have to be prepared for when you've never lived together. Yeah, you know what I mean? Especially when you haven't lived right. together. Right. Personalities are all coming in at one, one place. But before we go, we're just going to have like a mini, how are they going to do it at the wedding? This is like old do school, what? right? Don't get in my business. Um, this is not normal on the show, but... We're about to wrap up, and I don't have any, but this is like the, I know Sherrod is like, this old school, we, we don't do these things, but they do the wrap around, the oh um, kind of thing, and <laughs> I think we did that, but oh. I set this up just for the guests, and if anyone wants to give any congratulatory or uh. messages to Tanya and Sherrod, you know, you can just send them through now, I will read it, and they're going to give us how they're going to wrap around, and... Could, could we? Tony is on. Is, do you think Tony's into the. Ooh! Hi! But Tony, look how you're putting us on blast. Hey, Who's SL this? can't drink that. My our trainer says, SL can't drink that. Tony, do! Oh, KJ, no, this is, this KJ, is just... KJ, see? I, I had my protein KJ. shake. I had my protein KJ. shake. KJ, <laughs> we drinking this tonight. Now, what happens after that? You decided that we starting again October 1st. I don't remember. KJ what already say you getting bust up tomorrow. KJ, I had my shake. See, I had my protein shake for the night. Okay, so people think that this was a very beautiful session. They enjoyed your company here tonight Yay. on Faith Talk. Definitely, I will be bringing you back here. Um, I just want to say congratulations to Sherrod and Tanya, who has become a part of me. You know, I see them as sisters and brothers, and I, I really wish them all the best, all the happiness that, you know, life has to offer. <laughs> uh, marriage is beautiful. Um, the most, you know, pray together, pray for each other. Tanya, especially a woman, should always remain on her knees for her husband. Yeah. You know, even if he does not hold your hand, you pray for him, you cover, cover him. him. God is, mm -hmm. is, is in charge. <laughs> cover him. Yeah, God is in cover charge. Him. You know, and so I would want you to, you know, keep him covered because, of course, this is how I look at it. When our men go out there, they're going to face the real world. And, and yeah. it's our job to keep them covered. All right. Once you keep them covered, you don't have to worry about anything because God is going to do that for you. So, <laughs> so just before I give you a surprise, because I have another <laughs> surprise, we just want to see the people want to see the wrap around the arm and you put it to your right mouth. Are we looking for? Are we gonna do that? Are we gonna do that? Do what? The, the wrap around. Yes, there? everyone saying congrats to my brother and his queen. Congratulations! Certainly, this is beautiful. Big up hashtag. Keep people out of your marriage, especially single people. Congratulations for coming in and head. have a baby right after. Let's go. We waiting. Hurry up. What are we doing? You wrap the, you know, that olden days. Guys, y'all never see that before. Fix yourself. Stuff, you see, this is you the problem. We can't man. even fix it. I want to get a shot from the photographer. I want him to capture this. Watch it. Watch it. Watch Live it. on Face Talk. The real deal. You must prepare. <laughs> the real deal. What are we doing? I don't even know how to do this. This I, is like I old mean, people team. Only Kiki can come up with something. Go ahead. What are you doing? The you real just, deal. You drink you from that cup. You oh. drink from your cup. Uh, what? Come on. Send some hearts across the screen, drink everybody. Oh, drink. Oh. Say drink from a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> cover him. Tell her to cover me, please. <laughs> cover him. All right. Congratulations, guys. That once is very again. Old school, that is very old school, but. But every photographer they know about that. I know that Sherrod <laughs> doesn't do things like that, but you know, you know. And just before you leave, of course, everybody, of course, send the hearts across the screen, everybody. If you enjoyed this session, send some hearts across the screen. Hey, um, say, I do get to hear Send some hearts across the screen. Everyone knows that my guest never leaves without a shirt from me. Aww. All right, so Tanya's gonna get a faith tee. I'm not too, my signature is on the, 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 the shirt.
That's good. You start. Yeah, I love that. I don't start. I love that. I love that. Tonya's shirt says, Worry ends where faith begins. <laughs> and this is Tonya's shirt. What is his so, so, get mid tonight. Oh, wow. No, they don't live together. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so this shirt is for Tonya. And Gerard, I got you a shirt, but it's kind of big. I'm still going to give it to you. If it's too, I'll get another There's size. But this is Gerard's shirt, and it says, Faith over fair. Oh, you know, Gerard talked about awesome. his faith, and I think that this shirt is is fitting for you. Tonya, you dropped my phone. This Sorry, is fitting sorry. for Sherrod. So everyone, if you're coming to the Dream Board Party, I will have my Faith Tees on sale for a small price, of course, and that's going to go towards my now. foundation. Right. I believe that everyone should walk with their faith on their chest. Anything that describes them, you cannot be afraid mm. to show or to share, you know, your love for God. Yeah. And so with my faith tees, I'm bringing them out. Of course, my signature is going to be on it. So they're branded. <clears throat> by KJ, me. this ain't a, this ain't, this ain't a dry fit. So I, I can't wear this in the gym. Sorry. That's why. But I just want to thank everyone. Can I have my phone? So oh, I can sorry, 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 sorry. I just want to thank everyone once again um, for joining us here tonight. Before I close off, I just want to give special credits to the people that made it all possible with me here and is sewn into this ministry. I want to thank my husband tonight for dressing me, everyone. If you like the way I look, Stylist. my husband ooh, styled ooh, me ooh, tonight, ooh, all right? And so stylist. send some hearts across the screen. You know, my, my man, he styled me tonight. He was like, baby, I want you to wear that. And so I'm thankful to him for that. My hair was done by Nell Oliver. I didn't get a curl today, but I decided to go short. She really did. And Glow and Glamour Cody did oh the face God. of Tanya. Yeah. And she did my face. Check and, her Insta story. Yes, please check her Insta story. She's at Glow and Glamour. And I bless God for her because, you know, she decided to sew into my ministry. And she said to me that, you know, I'm going to take care of the faces of you and your guests. And I think that that is amazing. Tanya said that she'll come every week just for a glow <laughs> to sit on the chair. And behind the scenes, I just want to thank uh, Christoph Roll, Christoph underscore Roll. He's the person responsible for all of my YouTube work, and he's behind the scenes recording. And tonight, he's holding on for Ryan G, who usually captures the images, all right? So follow his page and take a look at his work. It's pretty good. Once again, I want to thank Tanya Williams and Sherrod Lighthorn for coming on the session tonight and empowering us and giving us some knowledge and some information and so if you want to keep up with Tanya and Sherrod, if you, if you are not a follower of their pages right now, how could they keep up with you, Sherrod? Uh, Sherrod L. Photo <coughs> on Instagram, on everything, actually. All right. Um, yeah. Sherrod L. Photo. Tanya like Tanya like and Tonya Lightburn, that's not true, she's Tonya Williams. Tanya but Williams. I'm definitely going to post a picture and underneath the photo, I will definitely put all of the places that you can find Tonya and keep up with Sherrod and see what they're doing, all right? Because maybe you may have a question for them. I'm sure they'll be open to answering it. Mm -hmm. Any final words that you want to share? No, I had a good conversation. I just think that we were able to share a lot with people mm -hmm. that were kind of where we were yeah. and wanted to know how to move forward, if they were going to move forward. And it was just a good dialogue. And so I enjoyed myself. I, I, just, I just put in, I covered I you. enjoyed myself. Thank you. Thank you. And so that is what Faith Talk is all about, a place where we come together and we realize that the world is not a lonely place. So you may feel as if you're the only person going through something. No, you are not. Your story is not for you, but it's for somebody else. So everyone, thank you once again. I'm so excited. Oh, oh Tanya wants to leave. Okay, go ahead, Sherrod. Don't blame it on all women. That's not all women. I didn't say all women. Okay, good. Tanya, final remarks okay, final to the remarks. women. To the women. Mm -hmm. All the ladies in the place with style and grace. Okay. Sherrod, she's bringing the wrapper out. Okay. Clearly. I'm a closet wrapper, by the way. Anyway, so, no, on a serious note, um, definitely to all women, to thyself, be true. If you are not ready, <laughs> If you are not ready for marriage, if you are not 100% complete, do not force your mate to marry you. You know you ain't ready. You ain't ready. Come on now. Let's be real. You're not ready. Become whole as a person. <laughs> Become Find whole as a person. Like no right. Find yourself. Know what you like. Know what you dislike. That's the only way you're going to be able to attract and keep a man. Because plenty of those are good. 
Of course, this will be edited on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Sherrod's face. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. So once again, I just want to thank Sherrod and Tonya. Um, I want to thank you for spending quality time, time with us. You, the viewers, you, you know, <laughs> you viewers, you make it all possible. You make the sessions oh. so good, and I really appreciate that hundreds of you there because even though it yeah. says 26 when I sign off I'm able to see how many people were here and I just want to thank God for all of you that came in all of you that had your questions and left good remarks um, God bless you all next week Wednesday right here at 8 p.m. I will be early next week for sure we uh, got I hope it's no rain BBC, no, <laughs> but I will be 8 p.m. sharp right here on next Wednesday I don't know who my guest is as yet but you stay in tune with my page. You will see me post. It may be me by myself or somebody else, all right? So join me next week, Wednesday, on Face Talk. Have a blessed night, everybody. <laughs>